Hassan Shakar education. His name actually got brought up in the Hassan Shakar class um, yesterday. Yeah, I mean, hey, I've said before, and I and I'll and I'll say it again: change cannot come from the ki- from the confines of of the system. It cannot come from how the system from how the system functions. It needs to come through uprooting and replacing with a new socioeconomic system. You know, that's the only way revolution and change can come. Because guess what? The bourgeois are going to do whatever it takes and whatever is in their ability to um to um to uphold their to uphold their own interests to use the state in whatever in whatever way they can to uphold the contradictions of capitalism and white supremacy. So how the hell are we going to cause change um with um within the system and how it functions when 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 the way it functions is supposed to uphold our, our oppression? You know, it makes no sense. Yeah, you're right. Uh, okay, brother. Uh, you're right. You know, I mean, we, we need to understand that the 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 mechanisms, the 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 political mechanisms of of voting in, in a capitalist society is all set up in such a way that regardless of who runs for who or what, you know, eventually the super rich or the super, super rich will eventually win that win the elections. Yep. You know, they'll they'll buy, they'll buy out oh, sorry. The elections is const, is continuously run based on who puts how much money is put into the cook, the, the yep. master. Whoever you comes know, to you got foundations, you got corporations, you have Big giant bankers that put so much billions and billions. I ain't talking about millions. I'm talking about billions, billions and billions and billions and billions of money into this, into this, into this, into this collection, or yep. into this, into this whole box. And and the more and the, the person who puts most is the person that's going to win. Yep, the person, the, the person who funds the most, the person who um. The person who um, who funds the campaign for these liberals and conservatives is going to be the one that's going to get policies passed that specifically benefit their corporation, exactly. their industry, exactly. their business. That's how this works. You know, it doesn't matter who gets put in office, regardless of if it's a conservative, a liberal, uh, a white person, a black person, an indigenous person, an Asian person. It doesn't matter because at the yeah. end of the day, because at the end of the day, when you when you when you when you are when you are in that system, and when you are working within that system, you are only given one option to uphold white supremacy. And if you don't do that, they'll replace you. They'll discard you. They'll 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 they'll, they'll kill you, assassinate you, blackmail you, force you to, to, to resign, whatever, and replace you with someone who is willing yeah. to um to 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 um to uh, to uphold to uphold their interests. Hell, the CIA killed Kennedy. Because they thought, um, because, um, because because they thought he didn't have he didn't have he didn't have what what it took. That's what they killed them. They killed um they um they killed him because because they thought that um they that he didn't have what um what, um what it took and they and they replaced them. You know. Yeah. But listen, listen to this. One of the major reasons that John Kennedy got killed. One of the major reasons was that the CIA, first and foremost, put out a plan to overthrow Castro. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and they set up a, a whole team of people who went, went to Cuba with the intention- operations. Yeah, with the intentions of taking over. Yep. Unfortunately, well, I should say unfortunately, how can I say that? Fortunately, Castro, was able to grasp what was happening and brought it to a head. Mm-hmm. Now, when he came back to the White House, you know, John F. Kennedy was in shock because he 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 uh, he saw that he he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it with you know, how he wanted to do it with the CIA and the troops and the gusanos and all that stuff. He couldn't do that, so he sort of, sort of like said no. We're gonna we're gonna have another another way of doing it. The CIA didn't want to 
they wanted to do that. They wanted to send another two bid, more powerful. And John F. Kennedy said no, because he didn't believe that it was going to happen. And so as a result of that, they set him up to kill, and they killed him. You know, uh, but getting back to getting back to the elections, people need to understand that lobbyists. You know, that, that's what uh, they call it, lobbyists, right? Lobbyists they're gonna pay off. They're gonna pay yeah, off people, whoever. People, man, people, man, go. You, 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 you people put millions and millions and millions a, a, a into 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 the box. I call it the box. Into mm -hmm. the box, you know, and. And, for, and, and not, it doesn't matter how much millions you put in. It's the billions that count. <laughs> not uh -huh. the millions, but the billions. You know, and so as a result of all the, if I put $1.5 billion into, 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 the, into the box, you know, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. Because not only that, because the, much, the people who got billions are going to come together and unite as a force so that that person in particular wins the, the elections. Yep. You know, Obama, the reason why he won, because he didn't put much, you know, the reason why he won was because I think, I think, I don't know, I may be wrong, but I think that the system was, the, you know, the situation was, it was so hot, man, you know, that, you know, in the black community in particular, in the black community, it was, it, it was, turmoil, you know, and people was people were uprising and all that stuff. So they want the system wanted to come forth with someone whom they whom they dress up as 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 a uh, you know a black a black you know black a, a black president. A comprador. So yeah to make it seem to the black population in particular the black population that's that what was happening. That racism was no longer in existence. Exactly. <laughs> you know, oh, oh, man, man, how could it, how could it be racism? We got a black president. Yep. Hey. It's uh, oh. you know, it's um, it it's um, it's a similar thing. Um, you know, you know who did something similar? You know who did something similar? Um, oh. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln yeah. made um, um, lied and made the union about uh. A, a, and, and, and made the American Civil War about quote unquote ending racism so that way he could uphold the union. So that way he could uphold his hit um his interests and his capitalist and his capitalist masters. That's what that that um that that that, that that's what Abraham Lincoln that's why Abraham Lincoln um um made the, the civil war about quote unquote ending racism quote unquote he wanted to use and manipulate the non-white masses of the US to uphold um, to uphold the union and uphold white supremacy um, by making them think that they were on their side, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, also, I mean... also, 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 I um, I would love to, to continue having this conversation, but I also, um, you know, um, I also think that we should get on with. Yeah, well, um, let's with, let's, um, let's with, get on with who's gonna be the the, the what you call it? The host. I, I, w I was asked to be the host today, and I'm very patient. But we're 21 minutes into this, and I don't. Oh, I didn't want. Let's, let's I didn't, do didn't want to, you know, ruin the. the no, the no, talk. no, no, no. It's, it's no, really you wasn't fine. doing it, but you got to follow the rules. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, follow the rules. With, with, with 21 minutes into it, and uh, we are on live recording now, um, or as of 10 minutes ago. Um, uh, would somebody like to read the statement of unity? Because I don't have that on my notebooks that I can read it. If somebody has that, so uh, I don't have it. That's that's able to read that. Uh, let's start it with that and then move forward. I unfortunately do not have the same of unity as well. Um, Shamako, do you, um, Comrade Shamako, do you have the same of unity on hand? I know he messaged earlier saying that he wasn't able really to talk. And ooh, yeah. that's not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I have it, it's on my phone, but then I would, I, I won't be, it's too small for me to read. Um, yeah, I know. It, it's the same with me. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't get it either. Well, if uh, Shamako, 
um, not able to uh, help out with that at this at the moment. Um, we read it every time, and of course, we'll read it again on Friday. If uh, if it's okay with you, comrades, we pass that with the understanding uh, in all respects and all power to the people and all respects to uh, the comrade Newton's uh, words. Um, we can keep, we can continue reading, or we can start with the reading. Okay, we could do that. But, uh, you know, with me in particular, my, my problem is I don't have the book. And, and if I, and, and uh, I don't know how to, to find, oh. I, I have problems, you know, with, with technology, you know. Yeah, technology. yeah, I, I, I totally understand that because I was finally able to get, get it on my, uh, for, through Messenger on my, so I can, uh, you know, pull it up on my notebook because that the little notebook's not signal compatible. So, um, Mm -hmm. I am able to read, so maybe between uh, me and the other, and the comrade Gabby, uh, we can um, read it. And I, if you guys don't mind, excuse the missing of the statement of unity, but uh, we will follow up with that on Friday. Yeah. And if it if it's okay, I'll start reading. It's okay oh, yeah. with me. And, and it's not, and, uh, it's not too long of a chapter, so we'll be pretty good, even though we're twenty three minutes into it. Uh -huh. uh, Gabby, yes. Oh, um, I was just gonna say, um, comrade, uh, com um, comrade Joe, if by any chance you um you can't you can't read it or or something or something comes up, um, I'll gladly um I'll I'll gladly um I'll I'll gladly um re read the rest. Right, right. Oh, thank you. Because I was gonna try to read half, and then if you want to follow through with the rest, that'd be appreciated. Sure, I'd love to. Okay, so going back to where we're at and it's chapter eight on the war path of the Ojibwe warrior from Dennis. Uh, comrade Joe. Yes. Uh, comrade Joe, don't forget to, um, don't forget to share your screen. Huh? That way everyone can follow along. I do not know how to do that. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So, so, um, so, um, um, so click. So, um, so tap on your phone and when you tap on it, um, a little tab should show up on the bottom and it should um and it should show things like you know mute start video participants um you know that stuff right you, you see that stuff yeah no um i see mute stop start yep move stop it. video participate chat yep um, reaction move um move um move um move that bar to the um to the right like move it because there's more options to the right, move it along, and it should show an option that says share, and okay. uh, and that's it's how you share your screen. Yep, click on it, and you should be able to share your screen. Yeah, yeah. Even if I share my screen, it's not on the reading. So, hmm. well, let me I see. Well, yeah, that's why well, I was asking for assistance earlier when we talked. Um, gotcha. And, well, let me, well and I know Shimako said uh, he's busy at work, so he's not. He, able to do that at this moment well let me see if i can do it um let, 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 let me see Thank if you. i can do it so let me uh let me get reading let me get it there we go um what chapter are we on comrade <laughs> i did not remember we are, um we are in chapter eight, chapter eight. And, gotcha, gotcha. and on the pdf it's 118 page 118 Gotcha, 118. Okay, let me see. Screen photos. Okay, screen. Skip start broadcast. All right. Can y'all see my screen? Yes, so it yes. goes on to the beginning of the book. Yep. And you'll probably have to go to page 118. 118, gotcha. 118, 118. There we go. 118. So y'all can see this, right? Yeah, we see it small though. We see it small. Is that better? That, yeah, that's, that's about better. the maximum. We can blow it up uh, to be there. You go. Yeah, um, is that better, comrades? Yeah. Yes. 
All right. So, um, comrade, uh, comrade, um, comrade Joe, um, if you want, I can read the, the first half, or you can read the first half, and I'll and I'll scroll down to follow with your reading. However you like. Uh, if you would like to get started, that's fine with me. If not, I can get started. Uh, if all that's right, your call. Uh, how, how would you right. say? Um, for um, for right now, I'll start. I'll start, and then and then you read half of it. Okay, if I understood. Stay with you. Yes, that's perfect. Oh, wait, but but first, let me see how long this is. I don't want to end up reading. Um, I don't want to end up reading all of it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's really short. It's really short. It's only uh. So let me count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Okay, so uh, so you it's got, so you, you, you do five and I do five. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep. All right. So I'll start reading right now. Uh, chapter eight on the on the war path. There is a prophecy in our in our in our Ojibwe religion that one day we would all stand together. All tribes would would um all tribes would um. Hook oh. arms, uh, yes. Hook, ar hook arms and brotherhood and unite. I am elated because I live to see this happen. Brothers and sisters from all over this continent united in a single cause. This is the greatest significance, um, significance to Indian people. Not what happened or what or what yet may happen as a result of our results. Eddie Benton, Bonet, Ojibwe, Ojibwe. As long as American Indians were polite and soft-spoken and acted with decorum, they got nowhere. African American civil rights had been had been gained had been gained by protests. Clyde and I decided that in order to get anywhere, AIM had to become a confrontational, confrontational but not violent. AIM walks with the with the canupa, the sacred pipe. Of peace. If we were to put the pipe away and only carry the gun, our movement would come to nothing. By 1969, I was completely absorbed in the study of American Indian struggles. I gathered up as much information as I could, as I could get my hands on. I could not get enough of it. Sometimes I would read on the subject until two or three <laughs> in the morning. Uh, I soon realized that the struggle that the struggle for our land was at the heart of our many problems. In some areas, tribes were already fighting to get back territories that had been taken from them. The Pitt River Indians of Northern California were in the forefront with their struggle to reclaim their ancestral lands. Fights for native hunting and fishing rights were a part of these land, land struggles. I was determined that AIM should take part in this battle. In November, we heard of the takeover of the island of Alcatraz. Uh, Alcatraz. Uh, Clyde Belcourt, Belcourt um, I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, called me at home and said, Hey, DJ, did you hear the news tonight? A bunch of Indians occupied Alcatraz. Alcatraz is an island in San Francisco Bay known as the Rock, quote unquote. It was established as a federal prison in 1936, but closed down in 1963. When the Indians took it over, it was an abandoned, uninhabited relic. Uh, Clyde, George Mitchell, and I agreed. Well, let's go. We called the other. We called the other AIM members for a meeting the next day, saying that we plan to go and support those <laughs> people on on the rock. Somehow, we scraped together the money for um, for airfare. Within the week, about 15 of us arrived in San Francisco. It was around the end of November 1969. We called my friends Le Lehman and Trudy Bright Brightman, who lived in the Bay Area. Lee was, um, was head of the United Native Amer Americans and published a newspaper on Indian issues. He was a powerful speaker in those days. He arranged for... Uh, for for a, he, he arranged for us to take a boat to Alcatraz to meet with the people out there. He loaned me this, this sleeping bag so that I could stay on the island for a few days. 
we would be joining American Indians from from many different tribes and some Indian students from from um, from Berkeley. Those who had orchestrated the takeover of the island hoped to retain the massive abandoned eyesore for an American Indian educational and cultural complex. That sounds awesome. The government seemed to have little interest in Alcatraz until the occupation began. Judging by how isolated, barren, and ominously stark it was, Indian people, however, were enthusiastic to restore the crumbling um, old relic. It seemed fitting somehow that, that this former prison should benefit Indian people. Because among the first political prisoners incarcerated uh, there was a group of Hopi fathers who refused to comply with, with, the, uh, with the government's forced boarding school pre- practices. The Arizona boarding schools were met um schools um wait sorry the arizona boarding schools those men had been opposed were part of the same oppressive system that had torn me and so many other indian children away from their homes and families for their entire childhood those 17 hopi men stood up for their children in spite of the heavy consequences the 1969 takeover of alcatraz was was a continuation of that stand up attitude for indian empowerment the the occupiers had a vision. On the naked pile of stones, there were to be gardens and ha- and ha- habitat for birds and animals. It was a great dream. There wasn't an official leader for this occupation, although there were some remarkable people involved. The main spokesperson there was a Mohawk by the name of Richard Oakes. He had traveled the country studying the problems of various reservations and working as an activist whenever he was needed. An iron worker by trade, Richard uh, Richard, then worked in the, in the San Francisco Bay Area Indian <coughs> community. He was a family man, easygoing and bright, a born leader. He was to pay a high price for his dedication to the demonstration on Alcatraz. His daughter, Giovanni, died on the island when she slipped and fell off from an unfenced t- tear from the prison. It was on Alcatraz that I, was, that I first became acquainted with a young Sa- um, Santee Soy poet and activist, John Trudell. He and his wife, Tina, had been working tirelessly on environmental issues and water conservation on reservation land. I was struck by John's um, eloquence. He had a way of, of cutting to the core of a problem. Clyde and I were glad when John joined AIM and became one of our leaders. He met 30 or 40 people on the island. I'm sorry, we met 40 or 30, um, we met 30 or 40 people on the island. We were given a tour of the whole place by some of the Indian security. I saw a sub-basement where hardcore convicts had probably been confined. Beyond a door with a tiny slit for observing prisoners was a dark, horrible place with a, with a drainage hole in the middle. There was nothing else, not even a, a cot to lie on. There were six rooms like that one. I decided to stay on the rock for a couple of days. My bed was on the second tier of one of the cell blocks. It was extremely cold and damp at night. I thought about all the prisoners who had been caged in the cells um, at Alcatraz all those years. So many died there. How they must have suffered in the in the dampness and cold. I curled up that first night and a chill went through my whole body. I went to sleep thinking about my confinement in the Minneapolis state prison system, how I had vowed never to go back to any prison after that. And here I was sleeping in a cold cell intentionally. I noticed right away that there was a lot of happiness amid those dripping walls. The comradeship was warm. People were high spirited and there were joyful sounds of drumming and singing. The occupation of Alcatraz of, of Alcatraz lasted from November 1969 to June 1971, when a government when a government took over the island by force, dragging Indians in handcuffs off the island. Alcatraz has since been uh, made a tourist park. When we returned to Minneapolis after spending a few days on on the rock. Clyde, George, and I talked about the need to be more aware of national affairs concerning Native issues. 
the winds of change were upon us. I could smell it and feel it. Our time on the off the tracks had woken us up to the realization that we were part of a larger movement and that the reclaiming of tribal land had to be on AIM's agenda. We planned to justify a series of takeovers with the Treaty of 1886, under which land had been had had fallen into 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 disuse by the government would be available for native people to reclaim. Early on morning, 70 of us took over an abandoned um, naval station at the northern edge of Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. It was manned by only one security guard. We moved to occupy the empty buildings, knowing that we were in for a fight. Finally, one morning, a loud banging woke me up. I had been sleeping in one of the small rooms downstairs. I looked outside to see a large number of marshals and police trying to knock down the doors. I ran to the third floor where the women and children were sleeping and woke them up. The woman took care of the evacuating took care of evacuating the children. Meanwhile, the police took over the first floor, forcing us to the second. By the sheer numbers, the police and marshals were able to take over the second floor. They just kept coming. We barricaded ourselves in the third floor, but soon there was a pitched battle between fits and fists and clubs. I got hit from behind while I was fighting um, one man and started to rise again. Days when I got slammed again with a nightstick. I was out of the out, out for the count. When I came to, I was being dragged from the building. Once I got back on my feet, I walked I walked unaided to the to the paddy wagon. Clyde and Jerry Roy put up a hard fight against against half a dozen cops, but were finally clubbed down. The wagon took us to the federal building in St. Paul. There were some busted heads that that day. We had some big lumps on our scalps. I had two. I remember sitting in the in the holding cell that day as the marshals t- haunted us with insults. The police had won this round, but in fact, we could still laugh about it. Even on, on the way to jail, we had been singing. A similar takeover was led by my friend Herp, um, Herp Paulus, chairman of, chairman of Ames, um, Milwaukee? Milwaukee. I pr- Milwaukee, Milwaukee chapter. With 25 or with 25 of his people, he occupied another federal federal site, an abandoned Coast Guard station in Lake Michigan near near McKinley Beach. Herb stressed to everyone that this was a peaceful takeover. But his group would not leave until for, forcibly removed, as had I, as high as I had done. Herb claimed the site under the Treaty of 1868. Milwaukee, Milwaukee police are um, wait. Milwaukee police arrived on the scene in two squad cars, but they promised to leave the um, the AIM occupiers alone as long as everyone remained nonviolent. A, a year later, AIM still occupied that site. It had been converted into a halfway house for Indians with alcohol problems who were going um, through detox. There were eight per, um, permanent residents and the capacity to house many more. <laughs> also, AIM had established an Indian community, um, an Indian community school for elementary, junior, um, junior high age children. And 90, um, it had 90 students. Herb remarked, the only thing I regret is that we didn't, uh, is that we didn't take over a larger facility. We also made headlines with the uh, with the 1970 occupation of Mount Rushmore. The mountain is is part of a sacred black um, is part of the sacred Black Hills, and according to legend, home of the Thunderbirds. Within the Black Hills are some of the of the holy sites of both the Lakota and Chine? Cheyenne. Say, Cheyenne. To have the mountain defaced with, with the likeness of Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, and, and Roosevelt has been like rubbing saw in our wound. For us, the giant faces were the images of our conquerors, planted on the very heart of Indian country to mock us. This takeover was not started by AIM. It was the idea of three feisty Lakota ladies living in Rapid City, South Dakota. Richard Richard Erdos, um, uh, audio taps two of them Lizzie um, Fast Horse and Mur- Mural um, 
Wakasu. 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 While they were in the mountain, they said the idea of coming up here originated with us. We printed up some some handbills about the movement to inform the reservation community of Pine Ridge what was happening. We took those handbills. Um, we, we took those handbills from home to home, telling people not to say anything about it. So the Indian population of Ra of Rapid City and the folks of the Ra of the reservation knew about the occupation of Mount Rushmore a month before it happened, but the white people never knew about it. We just didn't let it out. Lizzie Fast Horse went to say went on to say there were only there, there were only us three women. We thought other people were coming up, but they didn't. I guess they were scared. There was lightning all over the there was lightning all the way up. So we were thinking about Crazy Horse, and we knew he was with us. We were really scared that the Rangers would arrest us. For a few for a few days, we were handing out handbills to the tourists below in the parking lot. But then Lee Brightman and a group of his people came to support us. We got braver and braver, and now we're not afraid of anyone. Lee Bright Brightman's great grandfather was killed at the Battle of the Little Bighorn on Custer's last stand. We took over the leadership on the mountain while while medicine man, man John Fire Lame Deer became the group's spiritual guide. The group had grown to 23. Besides Mural Waku, uh, sorry, Wakasu. Wakasu and Lizzie yeah. Fast Horse, other soy women also climbed the sacred mountain. Among them were Ruth, um, were Ruth Hunsinger and her and her daughter. Divine Mini, um, Divine Mini Two Shoes, Ver, um, Verna Gannon, and Jean Erdos, Richard's wife. Everyone camped above and behind the carved heads in a little ho um, hollow surrounded by pine. Lizzie Fast Horse related, we painted Red Power Indian Land in large red letters on a big rock. We draped a huge flag with the words Soy Indian Power over the forehead of one of the presidents. Pretty soon, some rangers with with, fl with flashlights came up and ordered us off the mountain. They were afraid that we would dump red paint on the, on the, on the faces of the presidents. We just laughed and said that that was a pretty good idea, come to think of it, and we, st and we scattered <laughs> into the woods. There was a rumor that rangers up on top of the mountain had guns, so, um, so everybody hid all, all, all the night. The rangers occasionally tried to make an arrest, but always without success. One of our young men told them, if you arrest me, you will have to carry me all the way down. The rangers came up trying to arrest the young man. It was said that Wallace McKay, um, superintendent of Mount Rushmore National Monument, requested a company of armed forest rangers to defend him. He said he believed that, quote unquote, the AIM radicals wanted to put their feet on my desk. A story from the, that time is still told about how some of the guys occupying Mount Rushmore formed the human chain by holding onto one um, one another for, for dear life so that one at the end could pee on Teddy Roosevelt's nose in a gesture of contempt and defiance. <laughs> that part of the protest was a quote-unquote from men only party. <laughs> um, I'm done reading the five pages. So if you, Comrade Shay or Comrade, uh, I, I'll, comrade do it. Uh, I'll do. I'll do it now. <clears throat> gotcha. Okay. I'll follow up. Okay. I got it. Lame deer. Lame deer had brought an eagle feather staff, and a few AIM members scramble, scramble up to the highest point of this so-called shrine to democracy. Juggy fast horse ham staff into a crack, into a, in, into a crack in the highest rock, thereby reclaiming the Black Hills for the late Lakota people. A reporter from the Rapid City Journal asked Lame Deer, what is the significance of this stuff? Lame Deer replied, the lower part of the staff, staff is painted black, which stands for night and darkness. It is the black face paint at a wall. It means that I am putting a blanket over the mountain by putting, by painting this staff. These, these presidents' faces are shrouded and dirty until the treaties, 
treaties concerning the Black Hills are fulfilled. The upper part of the staff is red, which represents the sun, the day's light, and the red face paint of gladness. It means that this land someday will be ours again. After, the, after, after that, Lane Deer renamed Mount Rushmore, Creation Horse Mountain. Later, a few others, among them Russell Means, John Trudeau, and I made our stand on the four board monster pits. By then, most of the original group had left. The protests on top of Mount, of Mount Rushmore only made the local news. The first, first big splash aimed made nationwide was the Playmoth Rock and Mayflower two demonstration. This event was originally the idea of Frank James and other Wapunok Indians who had proclaimed Thanksgiving as the day of mourning for American Indians. James uh -huh. was president of the Federation of New England Tribes. He intended to use the 350th anniversary of the Pilgrims landing, which would ensure a large crowd to demonstrate in a dignified and responsible manner in order to draw attention to the repression and poverty of American Indians. This was, uh, this was to be done by members of the local tribes, the Wapad, oh, I can't pronounce it, Wapano Lots, Narragonset, and Passa, uh, I can't pronounce it, sorry, Native American people, I'm sorry, who have been, as Russell Mean put it, the first victims of the wrath of the Wars. The Wapanola had invited AIM to come and help make this a really big protest. And of course, he came. On this occasion, the AIM group was led by Russell Means, Clyde Belcourt, John Trudell, Floyd West Westerman, and me. It happened on November 26, 1976, and turned out to be the quiet as dignified as Frank James Express. AIM led the event distinctly militant for flavor. We, we made sure that we made an impact. The action began when some 300 Indians from about 20, 20 tribes gathered around the Statue of Liberty of Mrs. Sawyer, chief of the Wapalong uh, on a hill. Wapanoags. Yeah, I can't pronounce that. Plamon Rock in, in the harbor. We made some fairy speeches, Frank James shouted. We, went, we want people to know that the pilgrims stole our corn and that all that love and brotherhood stuff between Indians and white settlers is a lie. I call the pilgrims landing the greatest land grab in history. At the same time, local whites held their annual pilgrims progress parade and feast. A, reply, a replica of the Mayflower II, which brought the first English people to North America was anchored not far away. I told Russ, with all the attention on what is going on here, Let's go and take over the ship. Oh, as about 30 of us swamp up one gangplank, a crowd of terrified tourists ran down the other. It was easy to take, to take the Mayfly because there was nobody guarding her. Bill Miller, an Indian from Michigan, lowered the old British royal banner. Somebody else holding up the American flag and we host it in style upside down. I climbed up the clay, the rigging as high as I could go, all the way to the top of the of the mass. I made a speech from the crowd's next nest to the crowd that had gathered at the wharf. Then we noticed the life size figure of pilgrims planted here and there on the and here and there on the upper deck. A dummy of the cap uh, a dummy of the captain was sitting near the wheel. Clyde grabbed it and climbed up the mouse to to where I was perched. As he took hold of one arm and I and I of the other, 
Clyde Yell. Here's the captain of the Mayflower. You could have him. <laughs> we flung the dummy into the sea where it blubbered up and down. At the same time, our young amen, amen began throwing more of the pilgrim dummies overboard. Down below, people were clapping and cheering. Hey, I would cheer too. The, the dumping of the, dump, of the dummies brought a dozen policemen on the scene, eager to clear the ship. We did not give them much of an argument. I did not want anybody hurt, and we had already made our point. We had held the ship for two full hours. We had made history. We had made our most famous symbolic gesture by taking over the Mayflower, too, in the name of the American Indian Movement. After that, Russell Means staged another media event as only he could. As the, as the headlines in the, in, in the Boston Globe put it, Indians dump sand on Playmont Rock. Russell, with the help of Clyde and Snow Turtle, together with some, with some weapon horn and aim people, spoil a planned Thanksgiving feast by burying Playmont Rock on the civil feet of sand from the beach. We had about 20 people with shovels working until the whole rock was oak covered. Russ summed, up, summed it up by telling a crowd of reporters and onlookers, this is a new kind of Boston tea party. Only this time, the Indians are for real. Later on that night, John Trudell and others sneaked in again and painted old Playmont rock bright red. Next, next, after Rush speech, we marched to Playmont Plantation where the locals were running around dressed up like 17th century pilgrims. We spoiled their little costume ball by walking into the big dining hall and creating a scene. One man who seemed to be in the head, head program asked his unexpected guest to sit down and take part in their turkey dinner. I was angry, knowing that this feast of brotherhood was in reality a celebration of pilgrims armed with match match lock guns and steel weapons, killing peacefully weapon Indians. I yell, we won't eat this crap, and grab one end of the long table covered with plates of food. I gave it a, a heave and turned it upside down. Spill, spilling plates, bowls, glasses, bottles, and a lot of turkey wings and dumb sticks on the floor. Floor and Russ did not did the same. At this, at this, the pilgrims lost their comp composure. It was quite a party. We got our message across. Later, after all the commotion, I heard a little boy at a pilgrim parade ask his mother, where have all the Indians gone? Oh, they're not part of it, she told him. <laughs> oh, God, ain't that a kick in the ass? Wow. That was certainly a good read, God. Listen, it just it just, you know, the the description that he what they were they were talking about, man, reminds me of the description of of, of Attica. Because right after the rebellion at Attica, what happened was that they uh after people got shot and people were laying in the ground, man, all shot up or injured or hurt, they couldn't move. The police kept started kicking us started spitting on us and started pushing us around, even though we was on the ground. And so they told us to get up and, and run. And some of us couldn't even run because we were injured. So it was crazy. But the worst part, I mean, I mean, I must worst, there was a lot of worst, a lot of bad parts in it. But the worst is I found was when we had to run that gunlet, we had to run a gun that was 25 guys on one side and, and 25 guys on the next. And, and, and you had have, you have to have your hands folded like this and run to the gunlet. Now, as you run to the gunlet, they were hitting you with sticks, with clubs, whatever whatever it was. And, I, and, and, that, and, and those scenes in this book, man, remind me of that, you know, where, where I was, I was running, I was getting hit in the arm, I was getting poked in, in my, in my ribs with, 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 with sticks, 
I mean, the whole nine yards, man, it was crazy, man. And, and I was falling. I, I couldn't take, I couldn't tolerate that. And I fell to the ground, but I got up. And I said, no, and I got to keep running. And I kept on running all the way to the end, to the end uh, of the uh, of, uh, of this row. Then they put me in the cell. And uh, half an hour later, they came to a cell and they told me, what's your name? And I said, uh, well, my name is Chair. It's Chair. He said, yeah, you run over. Come here. So I, I went to the bars and they told me, put your chin on top of, put your chin on the bars. So I put my chin on the bars and then the police, he cocked his gun and he put it to my head. He said, Psh. he said, oh God, man, nothing came out. You're lucky, you're lucky. I, I want to see how lucky you are later. Just keep that, stay like that. And I had to keep my, my chin on the bars. Then he, another cop will come, oh. another come, another cop will come and tell me, what you doing with your chin in the bars? And I will say, well, you know, one of, one of your men told me to keep it like that. He said, well, sit down. So I sat down. So it was, I sat down, the other girl come back about 15, 20 minutes later. He said, what you doing sitting down? Come in, put your chin back on the bars. So I put my chin back in the bars and he did the same thing. He was playing Russian roulette with me. And, and nothing came out. He said, oh, man, you're lucky this time. You may not be lucky the next time. You know, three times and you're out. You know, so he left. He said, keep your chin on the bars. And then later on, man, hours later, man, the, car, the other guy came and said, you know, go ahead and lay down. Go, go ahead, back up and sit down the left. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm all hurt. I'm all hurt. Up. There's two other brothers in my cell with me. And one of them was shot in the arm. The other one got shot in the back. Oh man, it was crazy, man. It was it was insane. <laughs> so when I look at that book, when I when I listen, to, I was listening to the you know to the things that are happening to them brothers, man, people, man. I say, wow, it reminds me of Attica. <laughs> That's just. I am so sorry you you went through that, Comrade Che. That is fucking disgusting. Holy fucking Christ! I am. I'm so glad. They're so alive with us, comrade. I really am. No, no one should go through through what you went through. No one, no, absolutely man, no, no one. Not really, <laughs> not really. You know that's God, why. I, and, but listen, Attica is all of us. Attica is me. Attica is you. Attica is brother Joe. You know, and 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 You know, we all Atticus, man. You know, uh -huh. and, and, we're all comrades. Yeah, we are Atticus, man. Attica is all of us, man. And Attica mm -hmm. also means fight back, so we got to continue fighting back. Uh-huh. Beautiful, Santa. You know, this just shows that it doesn't matter if you are a peaceful demonstration or a violent demonstration. It does not matter. You're going to be put down. This, um, the bourgeois are going to use the state to uphold their own interests and uphold white supremacy. It doesn't matter if, you know, if... um. It doesn't matter how peaceful you are, you know how well mannered you um you um you um you speak. They will still subjugate you. They will still oppress you, and they will still put you down if they if they if they um if they see you as a threat in any way, shape, or form. That's what they did to Malcolm X. That's what they did to Fred Hampton. That's what they did to Martin Luther King. That's what they did to um to uh to um to Comrade Che. That's what they have done to every single re revolutionary that has lived. That had that has been killed, assassinated, black men, and so on and so forth. There is no other option but violence, as Comrade Stalin said. You know, um, um, we um, we communists don't want violence, but it's the only choice we have. It's the only option that the bourgeois is going to give us, because it's either violence or it's death. So yeah. Well, hey, uh, very well reading uh, both you comrades and stuff. And I just oh, wanted yeah. to, if I could jump in there, I just wanted to jump back to the beginning of this mm -hmm. uh, chapter eight. And I thought it was really positive what it was said by Eddie Benito Bene, who's Ojibwa. And he, he, and he says, and this kind of like going with uh, Brother Che uh, referring to like, uh, we are all uh, Attica or we are all remnants of of struggle mm -hmm. so this is what it says and I, and I just wanted to repeat it because i thought it was so positive from the beginning and let's see if my eyes work let's see there is a prophecy in our ojibwe religion 
that one day we would all stand together. All tribes would lock arms in brotherhood and unite. I am elevated. Oh, no, I'm elated because I lived in to see this happen. Brothers and sisters from all over this continent united in a single cause. This is the greatest significance of Indian people. Not what happened or what yet may happen as a result of our actions. And that kind of goes hand in hand with uh, the Rainbow Coalition. Uh-huh. Uh, because we, we are uniting. We are locking arms together. We're moving forward. And uh, of course, like uh, your uh, brother Che was saying, sometimes we're going to take thumps in the head with billy clubs. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that were mentioned in this chapter today was the taking of Alcatraz. Um, which, I don't uh, know about that. They didn't, they course, did not keep this down school. <laughs> yeah, of course, this was a, a representation of AIM taking over Alcatraz. But I would like to uh, share that there was also brown berets that were present really? in the taking of Alcatraz. Yeah. I didn't know yeah, that. Well, that yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. There was also Puerto Rican nationalists that were that were that were confined in Alcatraz. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know how they had mentioned uh, in the beginning where they, because Alcatraz was actually a military prison. Yeah, prior mm-hmm. to becoming a, a, a maximum security prison, I think it started back in like for, since the. Uh, Civil War days when it first was uh, originated. So they did send a lot of uh, Native Americans uh, there uh, early on. Uh, of course, I've heard... Uh, people... oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no. Oh, no I was going to say that I've heard people um, compare um, Alcatraz to Guantanamo Bay in terms of how brutal and disgusting both prisons are. I've heard people compare it to Guantanamo Bay. I'm glad you brought Guantanamo Bay up because uh, Mm -hmm. in a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago, it was like, as activists, why aren't we uh, bringing up Guantanamo Bay and those uh, that are still there? And I think I think the number was down to like, I don't know, 17 or 18 prisoners there. But I mean, of course, I I mean, that could be a false. I mean, we don't don't actually there could be way more. Yeah, we're not there, so we don't know actually how many uh, prisoners are are still housed there. Exactly, um, and it, and it's scary. You know, it's just fucking scary. The, the the horror stories that I've heard of political prisons in Guantanamo Bay and how and how they'll they'll stay there for years. In fact, I remember I remember I read how this one how this one person who was Middle Eastern, was put in Guantanamo Bay, and he stayed there for like 30, 40 years without ever going to trial, without ever without ever being oh, yeah. in court. He was put in that prison there's for no 30, 40 date. years. Yeah. yeah, there's no yep. trial date there. Well, you you could imagine, you know, when you when you when you when we talk about Guantanamo Bay and when we talk about Alcatraz and all these other prisons, man, so you could get us a, a glimpse and a reflection of what Attica was all about. You know, mm-hmm. we in Attica, we were, we were given one shower a week, one shower mm-hmm. a week. We was given one month, one every month we was given the toilet paper and we had to use, we had to <laughs> economize on the toilet paper, you know? So you can imagine how it was, you know? And, 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 and if you didn't work, you'd be, you'd be in your cell like, 23 hours a day, you know, mm-hmm. locked up in your cell. You know, the, there, there wasn't, you know, being that it was four prison, it's four prisons in one. You know, you got A, a block, B block, T block, D block, and E block, five prisons in one. You know, and I don't count the fifth one because those were the goody goodies. <laughs> the the <laughs> prisoners that, that never gave no, gave no problems. You know, the, the snitches, let me put it to you very bluntly, the yeah. snitches. 
you know, because mm. you have to be a snitch in order to get to that level, man, of being able to go outside of the prison and work. Mm. I, they never told me if I wanted to go outside of prison because I would have never came back. <laughs> the comprador, the comprador. You know, but uh, it's, it's prisons are prisons. And the way Attica was built, you know, back back in, in, in the 30s, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of commotion throughout the prisons, you know, and so they felt, they decided, they said, well, listen, we got to come up with a maximum security prison that, that's going to resolve all these problems of all of these, of these prisoners because they were rebelling all over the place. So they came up with Attica, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and for what I understand, for what I understand, if I'm not mistaken, Attica was built on top of a cemetery. Jesus, fuck. <laughs> You're gonna say you're gonna say something, Comrade Joe. Go ahead, Comrade. Oh, yeah. yeah, they they built uh, several prisons across the nation as model prisons uh, to to house what they at that time would call the uh, incorrigible or those that weren't able to be undesirable, uh, quote unquote. Yeah, those that would not be changed. So now it just so now they made them. And, and you know, Alcatraz was one. Atticus was one. I think Leavenworth was another. Yeah, another one. Uh, Leavenworth was another one. Latuna, uh, Marion, and um, was so, so forth and so forth throughout the country. Yeah, they mm -hmm. even have that, one in Colorado. Quentin. And Quentin. They, they they were starting to build them in the late 1860s, 1880s. Uh, these exactly. these prisons, and they, they yeah. used. They use prison labor to build these prisons. And one of the things I talked about with uh, some of the comrades in the South is that they still have, uh, what do they call that, uh, uh, forced labor on these prisons. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? Where they're still forced to uh, work in the fields or to, or to clean ditches and roads and stuff like that. And, I mean, that's, that's totally inhumane today in yeah. today's society oh i mean it was in he, he, it was inhumane back in that society but it's specifically now in today's society and now what they're going to is private prisons mm -hmm. uh, so it you know there's a, even a change within the prisons from from the late 1800s until like in today's time but it's still just a, uh it's a still a business just mm -hmm. the whole judiciary system is a business, whether it be from the street cop to the highway patrol to the judge to the prosecutor to the public pretender and and then the jailer and the transporter and then the and then and then the prison guard. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, everybody benefits, not everybody, of course, they sacrifice us. Yeah, to ben to make ben it a beneficial business. Exactly, it, but it's it's just a business, and uh, you, if you look at the numbers throughout history, who have been incarcerated, and for what reason, and the amount of time that they have served, because we got to remember, non white the poor, people, the poor go to jail, and the rich go free. Mm -hmm. So if you can afford a lawyer, well then your chances may be a little bit better, but they don't, exactly. they don't target those communities. They target the communities of low income communities of, mm -hmm. of uh, Brown, black and oppressed people and target those communities knowing good and well that they don't have the money to pay the ticket, knowing yep. good and well that they don't have the money to, for a lawyer, they have mm -hmm. to get a public pretender. And now the public pretender, the district attorney and the judge, all at lunchtime, sit on the same table and laugh. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a it's a, it's a dirty uh, business. Well, just just keep in mind that the attorneys, as well as the district attorneys, you know those. The, I read a book where they would talk about that a lot of the attorneys are number petty bourgeois. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Petty Bush was, and, and, and they, they just, I mean, they don't, you know, they get paid, you know, court-appointed court, court attorneys, they get paid, 
the same amount of wages, whether they win a case or lose a case, because they, mm -hmm. right, you know, and, and and that's how that go. So in order to 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 try to beat a case, you got to get somebody outside of that circle, somebody who is who's who's who is is well recognized as a good attorney, you know, and. It's hard to do, man, because like Joe said, brother Joe said, you know, I mean, people don't have the money, man. You got the mm -hmm. if you got if you got the money, then you got the, they got the time to listen to you, you know. Mm -hmm. And with me, man, when I, I when I went to jail, man, I I I, uh, I was fourteen years old. I was mm -hmm. fourteen when I went to prison. You know, they didn't put me in no 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 kid joint. They put me in prison in a, in a, in a in a men's penitentiary. You know. Uh, and I was facing, I was facing the electric chair, you know, and, and, and for murder, you know. And, what and, the uh, fuck? Yeah, I, it was a gang fight. It was a gang fight, and this guy took a knife out on me, and I took it away from him, and I stabbed him. Now, if I wouldn't have stabbed him, he would have stabbed me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, in stabbing him, I killed him. I didn't intend to. I had no intentions. I just, hey, you, 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 I took a knife away, and in the process, I just, I just stabbed you, you know. And so they were, they were trying to give me the electric chair, you know. And and uh, after seven months of being on trial, you know, they finally decided because this, there's this kid here, is 14 years old, you know, and, 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 and you know, I mean, he he'd been in and out of, in and out of kids' joints all his life, you know. So let's let's give him a, let's give him a, a a chance. So they gave me an offer of seven, of, of, of 20, ten to ten to twenty, and I took it. But the thing is, they didn't give me ten to twenty. They gave me seven and a half to fifteen, and I wound up doing all fifteen years. Fucking hell, bro! I am yeah. so sorry. You, I am but so I sorry. Be, you I went became, I, You know, you know. I mean, we could look at it prison in what sense, but prison to, for me, it was an education. <laughs> it was a blessing. <laughs> Why? Because it made me who I am today. You know, I'm a revolutionary. You know, if I would have went to prison, I probably would have never been been a revolutionary. Maybe I don't know. You know, but prison, going to prison and meeting five percenters and meeting uh, you know, Malcolm X followers and meeting the Black Panthers and then formulating the young, first Young Law Party in, in, in Attica and the second Young Law Party in Greenhaven Prison. It made me who I became, man. You know, and oh, prison yeah. did that to me. So in a way, I look at it, I say, okay, man, you know, it, 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 Attica is Attica, prison is prison. And it made me a revolutionary. And, and they don't know that every time they put a, a poor person in prison, I mean, look at George Jackson. George Jackson was another one. He was a, he was he, he was a lumpy he who was he in the street he was a lumpy proletariat you yep. know <laughs> a lumpy proletariat that's who he was you know but then he, then he went to prison and while in prison he he turned out to be a revolutionary Malcolm X <laughs> Malcolm yep. X was the same way <laughs> he, yep. he was a he was a dope dealer you know he was a pig you know he yep. was a hustler you know everything. And then he Prison, and then he went to prison and became a prince. <laughs> yep. Every um, whenever um, whenever the bourgeois, whenever the bourgeois oppress the masses more and more to uphold their own system, in turn they are creating their own downfall. Whenever they put someone in prison, there there's a possibility that they're creating a, a dangerous revolutionary. Yeah. You know everything that yeah. everything that the bourgeois do. Everything that 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 the bourgeois do has an effect. You know, it's a unity of contradictions. With um, when um, they may put someone in prison, but that someone in prison may become a revolutionary and and, and is gonna fight against their interests. You know, you know that's um, that's how um, that's um, that's how the contradictions within within our capitalist society work and that's why it's so important <laughs> that's why it's so important that we radicalize and educate the masses through political education through um through cultural revolution and through grassroots movements you know because that's what yeah. we, that's what we need right now and help and help you know with, with, with the black panthers and with aim that's exactly what they did the first thing one of the first things that they did was engage in cultural revolution and using 
and using arts, religion, traditions, you know, food and so on and so forth to empower their um to empower their community, show them why things are the way they are, why the materialistic conditions are the way they are, and show them how revolution will um will um will ha will happen through through their culture, you know, and that's what and that's what we need right now. Yeah, you know, it, one of the Attica brothers, his name was Dr. Jawia, which means the splitting of the sky. He was a Native America American, and when he came out. Uh, he he uh, he helped Russell Means put together the AIM, the you know American Indian Movement. You know, uh, he just he just recently uh, passed away, but he was an uh, African brother. He was an African brother, and uh, a good one too, man. He was a well a well spokesman. You know, his name was his his slave name was John Hill. You know, so if y'all want to ever check it out, John Hill, uh, otherwise known as Dr. Doc with your we are. Gotcha. Know. Gotcha. Um, um, we could continue talking. Um, we could continue talking, but I think it's best that we stop the recording. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that would be a great thing because I wanted to share something and I was, it's a first time thing and I don't want it out there on recording yet. Yeah. Also, um, also, um, also, Comrade Che, um, I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to um, say this, um, you know, to um, to be careful with what with um, with um, with what you say online, especially especially with with with, with what we with what you were saying. Yeah, no, I, being, I just you know, I just lost I just lost focus for a moment. I didn't know that we was uh, on, on online. Um, I think we can edit the recording you know i think we can edit it and we can take that out um if possible i think uh i'll ask i'll ask zen if you um uh if we can do that but but but, 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 but like yeah we, we gotta be careful y'all because when we post this because when we, because when, when we post this online on the internet you know anyone can be watching you know i always gotta be careful with what with um with what we say because when we get big classes, when this when, when this starts growing and when we get big classes, who knows, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're one hundred percent right. My wife always tells me, man, that be careful what you say, man, because mm -hmm. the person who whom you uh, you know, you 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 took his life. He had he he at that time he had two little kids that were growing up, and so they must be grown by now, mm -hmm. and uh. If they hear that, they say, oh, man, this is the one that killed my father. Let me go out to him, you mm -hmm. know? And so you never know, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, so, you know, I just, I, I just, I, I just totally forgot for a moment that we was on, you know, we was online, you know? Don't worry, I was comrade. Said that. Don't worry, so comrade. Speak, We're going to, uh, I'm sorry. Speak to the, speak to the sister, see if she could edit it, some of that stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, that, that that's what I was gonna say. We can edit it out. Uh, I'll ask Sister Zen or um or Comrade Joe or whoever um if they can edit out the recording, so that way um or or edit out that that part of, of the recording, so that way your life isn't potentially put in danger. But with that being said, Comrade Joe, you want to say something? Uh. Uh, yes, you know what? Like you can't get you can't get in prison for double jeopardy, but uh -huh. <laughs> you can't you can't you can face some repercussions from uh, the the living survivors of that mm -hmm. family. But you know what? Sometimes we got to do what we got to do because it was either you or him, right, brother? Yep. Yeah. It so was either no it was either him, me or him, man. I, I mean, I mean, it it hurt me. I I I was the most for doing what I did. You know, I didn't want to hurt nobody. You know, but hey, he tried to hurt me, so I had to protect myself. And and, and in the moment of, of 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 a slight emotion, you know, I uh, I took it away and I did what I did. And uh, well, even today, it. even today, as revolutionary soldiers, uh, when we say by any means necessary, um, we mean it. So it is what it is. Sometimes, I mean, of course, we don't want to we don't want to have to be the martyr. But we are prepared to be the martyr. 
Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And, and, there's, and you know, and, so in a way that, it, you know, in a way it's okay, you know, uh, because I, you know, I always express my remorse, you know, in a way, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I left. I left years I left, of remorse there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I did 15 years, man, and 15 years of suffering in Attica. It's like being in, con it's like being in, in, tax in, 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 what was the name of Alcatraz? Alcatraz. Yeah, Alcatraz. Yes. It was like being in Alcatraz. So, you know, I mean, people say, oh, well, you know, put them in jail, do this, do that. But, you know, they don't know that people in, in prison or in jail suffer. You know, prison and jail is not a place, man, where it's paradise. <laughs> well, you know, this is one of the things I wanted to share with you, comrade, since we were on the phone. Um, in pre preparation for June 24th, uh, La Mesa Nacional is having our national conference in Sacramento, California. I'm not sure if you all seen the flyers or not. But one of the things I'm very adamant about is fighting for political prisoners. And mm -hmm. one of the ones that I definitely concentrate on is Leonard Peltier. So I was going to share a little. Uh, uh, this is actually the rough draft of the beginning of the speech that I'm going to give on uh, June 24th in Sacramento, California. And if you guys will allow me to read it, uh, I would like to share it with you because this is like fresh off the box. It sounds good to me, it sounds good, go ahead. Preach on, okay. preach on Joe. <laughs> okay, so dear sisters and brothers, I would like to speak to you today about an issue of great importance. It concerns the wrongful imprisonment of an indigenous man who has been in a maximum security prison for over four decades, despite wow. being innocent. I am referring to Leonard Peltier, a political prisoner whose case has become a symbol of the struggle of indigenous peoples against systemic oppression and racism. Leonard Peltier is a citizen of the Turtle Mountain Nation and is both Ashinaabe and Dakota descent. His childhood was marked by a traumatic experience of being Leonard of being uh, taken from his grandparents' arms on a, to an Indian boarding school, similar to uh, the book reading we're having here, uh, who was also taken to a, an Indian boarding school, was, was specifically designed to assimilate indigenous children into a mainstream American culture. The philosophy behind indigenous boarding schools was based on the belief that indigenous cultures were inferior. The motto was, the, or the motto, or motto, however you want to pronounce it, the motto was, kill the Indian, save the man. This, this separation from his family and community had a profound impact on his life and contributed to the later involvement in the movement to defend the rights and sovereignty of indigenous communities and the United Snakes of America. Hmm. In the 1960s and 1970s, Leonard's involvement in the American Indian movement grew. This movement aimed to address the historical and ongoing injustices against indigenous peoples and the United Snakes, which have roots in centuries of oppression and struggle mm -hmm. since the arrival of the Europeans. Mm -hmm. The movement sought to defend the rights and the sovereignty of indigenous communities who had suffered forced removal from their lands exploitation of natural resources and disregard for their cultural and spiritual traditions. Mm. In 1975, Leonard and a group of around 40 people, including women and children, were violently attacked at their home on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. This unwarranted assault was carried out by two FBI agents, one of whom was reportedly wearing moccasins. The group was left with no choice but to defend themselves against the agent's aggression. Tragically, both agents lost their lives in the exchange of gunfire. Along with Joe Stunts, a young Lakota man interested in traditional Lakota spirituality and healing practices. Little Joe was fatally shot in the head by an FBI sniper's bullet, and his murder remains un resolved and uninvestigated to this day. Mm. Notably, his death is the only legally defined murder that occurred during the incident. It is worth noting that 
had he survived, Joe Stunts would have been acquitted of any wrongdoing under self-defense laws. Despite uh, the lack of evidence against him, Leonard Peltier was convicted and sentenced to two consecutive life sentences. The trial was marred by numerous violations of due process, including the coercion of witnesses, falsifying ballistics, and withholding of inculpatory evidence. Leonard's case has been the subject of international scrutiny and condemnation, with many human rights organizations calling for his release. Many people hold the false belief that Leonard was convicted of murder, but the prosecution changed their theory to aiding and abetting when they could not gather enough evidence to con con uh, secure a conviction, a murder conviction. This raises significant questions. Who did Leonard aid and abet? Given that his co-defendants were found not guilty, and they were, you know, because uh, of self-defense, right? And is aiding and abetting self-defense a crime? Mm, that's a question mark right there. Throughout his time in prison, Leonard has faced numerous violations of his human rights, including physical and emotional abuse, medical neglect, and isolation. Despite the ongoing hardships, he has remained steadfast in his innocence and has become a symbol of the injustices faced by indigenous communities and the United Snakes. Uh, I'm almost coming to a conclusion. Over the years, many individuals and organizations have called for Leonard's release, including human rights groups, religious leaders, and political figures. In 2021, over 50 members of Congress sent a letter to President Biden, urging him to grant him clemency. The Democratic National Committee voted unanimously to free Leonard Peltier. As we reflect on the ongoing struggle for justice and equality for indigenous communities, it is crucial that we remember those who have suffered and continue to suffer as a result of systemic oppression and discrimination. Leonard Peltier's case is a stark reminder of the need for accountability and justice in our society. Mm -hmm. the, Sorry. the imprisonment of Leonard Peltier is a blatant violation of his human rights as a clear <laughs> representation of the systemic flaws in the U.S. justice system. To rectify the injustice and show a genuine commitment to reconciliation with indigenous communities, the government must grant clemency. Peltier's case provides a powerful reminder of the ongoing legacy of colonialism, racism, mm -hmm. and injustice against indigenous peoples of Turtle Island. Mm -hmm. By acknowledging these historical and ongoing injustices and granting Peltier clemency, the government can take a significant step towards building a more equitable and just society for all. In closing, I urge all those who believe in justice and human rights to join the call for the release of Leonard Peltier. It is time for the United Snakes to right this historic wrong and to take meaningful steps towards reconciliation with indigenous peoples by granting Leonard Peltier clemency. The US government can demonstrate its commitment to justice and its respect for the rights and dignity of indigenous peoples. Let us work together to build a society that is based on mutual respect, understanding, and injustice for all. Thank you for listening. Listen, Beautiful that said, is Conrad. a stimulating, that is a stimulating, very stimulating letter. It you was. Know, it's very it stimulating, is. man. You know, Comrade and, it's also, and, and it's also a tearjerker, you know, because <laughs> he, come on, man. You know, that brother been been in jail. 48 for, years. 48, 48 years. 48. 48 years, 48 yeah. years of pure mm -hmm. agony. Yeah, okay. so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let that down. I mean, I know there's a lot of political prisoners uh, to mention, and we can go on and on, and we can have yeah. like five hours of, of talk of political prisoners uh, throughout all our organizations. But uh, this is one I'm really adamant about. This is one I'm making a stance on, 
and this is one that is will be heard. We he will his name will not go un, he will not go unforgotten as long as I'm alive. Yeah, there and you go. I talked to him personally on the phone, and he gave me his permission to be a spokesman as a brown beret on his behalf. Oh my that's God, that is an good, honor. That's good. That's, good. that's a that's an absolute honor. I'm so proud. I'm so happy for you, Comrade Joe. Um, how, um, Sorry, I got a little excited. I, I didn't mean to get excited. Fine. Don't apologize. Don't it's apologize. It's you have natural. every right to be excited. It's natural, man. You know, the, yeah. letter, itself, yeah, the letter itself is very potent. Exactly. But, it's very potent. You know, uh, wow. Uh, Comrade okay. Joe. Ooh, yes. Sorry. Uh, I just want to say one thing. Uh, I w w when you were when you were, were when you were speaking um, about your um, when, when you were when you were reading your letter, I did hear an error um, that you said that uh, th that that I want to bring up um, in terms of like in terms of like when you said um, I believe when when you were saying um, when you were saying you know um, how um, how um, how um, how indigenous communities have been oppressed and subjugated, I think. Um, if I remember correctly, you used the word by instead of to from referring to indigenous people. Well, you know, it's 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 a rough draft. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna have to tighten it up, baby. <laughs> like uh, but well, I mean, you know, hey, once hey. I get it all dialed in, it's gonna definitely be an impact to the peoples. Oh, but yeah. thank you for bringing that out. Um, because I'm always open for correction. My mind's a sponge. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm here hey, to hey. learn. And, and, and you know, I'm for the cause, not the applause. Um, well, I'm not, yeah, I love that. I'm not gonna be available. I'm not going to be there. But please, on behalf of the Attica brothers, you know, please uh, give, give, give him. You know, as you talk, and at the oh. end of the talk, say, well, I'm, you know, Attica brothers send their regards and send their support, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh yeah. You know, I'll definitely make that, uh, draw that to attention, and put that out yeah. there, comrade. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, um, Comrade Joe, if you want and if you're okay with it, um, you could send me your draft and I could and I could read it and point out any um any grammatical errors or suggestions, um, if you want. Yeah. I'll totally, I, I would totally be up for that. Actually, that's like the third rough draft, and still <laughs> hasn't been finally done. Um, let me let us do one more, and um. I'll definitely send it out to you and to get your opinion on any corrections or anything you would like to add or that that should be added or should be removed from there. Uh, mm -hmm. I am very open for that because uh, I oh, yeah. directly what I wanted to do is hit the masses and get exactly. the and, and get the attention of the masses. So that's it's not. About, yeah, that's that's, that's what that's where the strength is at, and especially exactly. collectively collectively as different organizations getting the point uh, because we all like even brother uh, comrade Che was saying, you know, he was a youth. Well, you know, I, my son would not, not by blood because I don't, had nothing but daughters, but I raised a boy for 13 years and I call on my son and he still calls me dad. But at the age of 17, he did a knucklehead move and shot somebody in the foot with a little 22. But the fact that he stole his cell phone at the time, his deal, plea bargain deal was 26 years. What the I mean, fuck? They, they tried to hit him with 68. His plea deal was 26 years. So now he's about three years into his sentence. Uh, and it's a damn shame, man. It's a damn wait, wait, shame. Wait, 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 wait. He was, so you're telling me that he's going to spend 26 years in prison because he stole a phone? Did I hear that correctly? No, oh, he shot somebody in the foot. Oh, I'm oh, not even wow. that fact. But being the fact that he took the kid's cell phone that the kid dropped that he picked up and put in his pocket just um, made the crime as a, 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 
you know, it, it, it brought it into different uh, categories, right? Yeah. So now you know, it's like a uh, aggravated robbery, right? And then when you take somebody's phone or you don't allow them to call emergency services, now it's almost like, uh, 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 what do you call that uh, term? Uh, uh, kidnapping almost, or or, yeah. or keeping them from keeping them from uh, you know reaching out. So they hit them with the freaking book, and uh, you know I feel real I, I feel real bad about that, but uh, you know uh, all I can do is push forward and push forward because uh, this is the society we live in. The whole school mm -hmm. to prison pipeline still exists. I mentioned this yesterday in our book reading, and I mentioned it. I mentioned it all over the place, like it's just a damn business, and they target our communities to run that business, to uh, mm -hmm. to just keep us oppressed and keep us down. I mean, exactly. and, and especially in the South, where they still put them on chain gangs and make them yep. work. It's just modern day slavery. Yep. Well, I mean, Joe, well, Joe, do you yeah. go visit him? Uh, he's in he's in California. I'm in Colorado right now. Um, we do communicate, but uh, when I'm in California again, I will make an attempt to go uh, uh, pay, pay a visit to him. Yes, you need to. Yeah, man. You know, a visit, one visit. You know, from time to time, will 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 help somebody spiritually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, 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 I had my stepfather come to see me from time to time, you know, and then he just drift away and he totally forgot about me. And then when I came home, he was dead. He, you know, he, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking about that today, comrade, like around four in the morning. It's like I'm such an activist for so many other things. But I, like I tell people, it has to start within ourselves mm -hmm. and then within our families. Yeah, you got to go see him, man, because you don't know, man. You know, you got you to gotta be able to go and, and, our, and, nationally. and, 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 and touch space with him, man, spiritually. You know, touch space with right, him. Right. Man. It's important, man. Very important. Even that, if I send them some that, of these revolutionary books, in prisons, man, and, and, a, and a lot of things happen in prison because nobody, nobody, you know, people out here, man, they say, oh, and that's all they do, oh. you know, yeah, you just start focusing in on the prisons and 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 what's happening behind those walls, those behind those walls, don't look at the wall, go behind it, you know, yep. then you start realizing the stuff that is happening. You know, because yep. I mean, people go through a lot of shit, man, with the with the administration. But it's also spiritually, they go through a lot because you know, I mean, they, they were, he probably was saying, you know, where where where's where's dad? You uh, know, comrades, why, we're recording. Why, huh? We're still recording. I thought we ended it. Oh, oh, we're gonna have to definitely uh, take all that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that way. Wait, I'm so confused, um, Comrade Joe. Didn't you have control over the recording? Because because um, no, I, I, I asked I asked you or Sh Shamako to do it, and I know Shamako was busy. Oh, oh, so oh we, my we, God. we can edit it prior to uh, putting it out there, and then we'll make sure that definitely. Of course, we ran over time. Any old how. Uh, uh -huh. This is one of the things that was brought to my attention, as when we do these uh, book clubs. Uh, readings or these book readings uh, we should concise it to like an hour especially if we're going to put it out there on Facebook because exactly. we're going to discourage uh, those that want to see it when they see that it's two hours and 20 minutes they're going to like oh, yo I ain't got that much time yeah exactly no, yeah, an hour right. on point, right. um, then they'll say hey well you know what I got an hour I got my lunch hour I, that's, that's what it takes me to drive home I can, you know, I can listen in. So um, something we got to keep in mind for the future that's been brought to my attention. Uh, oh, and no. I think it's beneficial. 100%, 100%. Um, one thing that I'm also trying to do, comrades, um, I, already talk, I, I, already talked to, I already talked to Comrade Joe about this. Um, so Comrade Jay, 
So Comrade Che and Comrade um, Shimako, this is going to be the first time you two are probably hearing this. But I'm, I'm trying to start a, a book club <coughs> in the UPM Discord server. I don't know if y'all are in there or if you knew that, they, that we had a Discord server, but I'm trying to start up a, um, a book club within said Discord server to, um, to boost up our numbers and to boost up the people who are um, who um, who are who are learning about pantherism, and uh, if it and uh, and and if it gets off and if it gets off and if it starts to you know um, if it starts to you know garner numbers, I could use um I could use that that platform to 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 direct um to direct people to the Second Rainbow Coalition um, um book club as well. So yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, That's have you good. spoken? Have you spoken with 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 uh, you know, Guame about yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, I have. I've I've yeah. spoken to Guame. I've spoken to uh, um, Chairman Zulu. Approved of us doing it. He says that he's fine with us doing it as long as we're not teaching any whack shit. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so, so, um, yeah, um, the first book. So right now. We're still trying to, to pick a date on when and where. I mean, okay, okay. So so for 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 right now, it seems like it seems like the 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 time that people are mostly free to do it is on Tuesday um, in the afternoon. So once once we pick the day, we're gonna pick the time, and once we and once we pick the time, then we're gonna start reading. Um, we're going to have a poll to see which book we're gonna start with first. Um, you know, the options are going to be, you know, Revolutionary Suicide by, by Huey P. Newton, um, Seize the Time, um, Wretched of the Earth, um, How Europe Under, Under the Developed Africa, and other, um, and other, and other rev revolutionary books from our non-white comrades to, um, to start off with. I personally think that starting off with Revolutionary Suicide will be best, and I think that's going to be the book that we're going to do first. So, yeah, if, um, if any of you guys can join... Um, in, in, in that book reading, it would be awesome. You said it was Tuesdays? Uh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, for right now, for right now, that's what, th that's what everyone seems to be uh, mostly picking, Tuesdays. But, um, but, that, but that could change. We're still, um, we're, we're still in the early developments of this. We haven't started the book club yet. But for right now, it seems like most people can do Tuesdays. Okay. What yeah, time? And, what time? And you I thought? heard Tuesdays is hard for me. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our res, uh, Brown Beret Revolutionary Study Group on Tuesdays between 5.30 and 6.30 to 7 uh, Pacific Standard Time. Um, so are you Tuesdays connected, are going very, Are you connected with your sister Connie? Or what? Sister Connie is my sister-in-law. Okay. Oh, Okay. And, and she has created great division across the board. Yeah, that's she's a combat. Also, man. She's I, my combat. I, 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 I will definitely uh, uh, be be cautious with that um, because um, we can go into that on, on a personal conversation, comrade. Not yeah. out here, especially being recorded. No, I know, problem. I just wanted to say, man, you know, give her my regards when you see her. Basically. Well, she does. She don't even like me. She calls me all kinds of different things. Wow. So, uh, well, so let's, I, leave it, I, let's leave it alone. We don't leave it like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you know what? That. There's always a proof in the pudding, right? So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be judged by my action. I do not want to get caught up in he said, she said, I said, I'm no, going no. uh, Yeah, that's not what I'm, I'm not. I'm not listen, one of those. That, you are not. Yeah. You are not alone. You are not alone. There's other brothers within the Young Law Party that's having similar situations, you know. All just, organizations are. Mind, situations like that is what created the dissensions within the Black Panther Party. 
Well, you know, we yep, got to be sweat. very cautious that there's still COINTELPRO alive today. They might call exactly. it a different name, yeah. but they're still uh, COINTELPRO. Exactly. And anybody yep. that's exactly. creating division, I'm not here to create division, so I'm not talking negative. But if there's anybody creating division within any organization, well, then that's a red flag automatically. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We got to pay attention to that. Well, other, other, other outside of here, if I, if from time to time, I do run into her outside of here. Your, your, your name is, 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 is clear, and I'm not gonna even mention you. You know, so hey, you know, and keep, we do have the same last name because she is my blood sister-in-law. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so shame on my brother. <laughs> 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 uh, you guys, you that guys being said, I think we're we're going into a couple hours already. Yep. Um, yeah. Anything else that anybody else wants to mention? No, of I course, think, I, I think we covered we covered a lot. Yep, we covered a lot. We're, yeah, uh, we covered a lot, man. All right, Chad. If you ever want to hit me up personally, um, hit me up personally, and uh, I'll, you're on my I'll Facebook, the, ain't you? I, I I believe so, Joe Gonzalez. Yeah, that's, you know, we'll, we'll talk, man. We'll talk. Yeah, because I'm talking about Yeah. If, and, and if you're not, you will be. <laughs> All right, then. No, no, no problem, God, comrade, you know. Uh, uh, comrade Che. As we say, uh, it's young Lord, palante siempre. Uh-huh. Siempre palante. Uh, siempre palante. Uh, <laughs> siempre comrade palante. Che, I got a question, yeah. comrade. Yeah. Um, do you want me to send you a Discord? Um, do you want me to send you a link to the UPN Discord server? Well, you could. You know, the only thing is that two, I'm trying to figure out, like, what time are we talking about on Tuesdays? Well, um, that's the thing. We haven't picked the time yet. We, 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 we're just picking out the date, but we're not picking out the time yet. After we have confirmed which date, after we confirm which day um, we're going to do the book club, then we're then we're going to have a poll that picks which times the majority of people can go into, and after that, then we're going to have a poll about which books um, we're going to, we're going to read first, and then we do the book club. Okay. Uh, well, you can send it. You can send it, and I'll look it over. You know, oh, yeah. and, and see what happens, man. You know, no problem. Mm. So are we going to close this out? Mm -hmm. All right. Then. With that being said, all power to the people. All power to the people. Stay strong, comrades. Stay that you know, strong. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow is a different struggle. And move forward. Tomorrow is a different struggle, man. And okay. uh, let's, let's just keep our wits. Let's keep positive and keep on moving forward. Yeah. Be okay, said, comrades. comrades. Have a nice one, huh? Have a nice, have a nice one, y'all.